Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello and welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast with John Bolton and Paul Neighbour. We're working through the APM um, project management qualification and we've got to the um, chapter on requirements management so let's just have a look at the um, assessment criteria explain how to manage scope through requirements management and configuration management blimey so blimey blimey yeah. so <clears throat> this is a uh, have you done any requirements management quite a complicated process actually Vastly simplified. Never seemed to come up in the old exam. <laughs> Didn't it? No. Never seemed to come. Never there was a question a few years ago. Um, what would go wrong if you failed to capture your requirements properly? Which I thought was quite a, a nice question, really. Yeah. Well, what would go wrong? What would go wrong? Additional cost, delay, problems with acceptance, lack of clarity about what you're actually doing. Um... Wouldn't Team demotivation. I think it's a lot more simple than that, isn't it? What? Or just deliver the wrong thing. <laughs> you deliver the wrong thing, yeah. Yeah. Dissatisfied customer. That's right. Dissatisfied users. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of this is, is that there's a lot of models and stuff that you can use. There's lots of systems, aren't there? Yes. Like for requirements, analysis. What's yes. that one called? Um, doors. Doors. That's doors. It. Yeah. Yeah, whenever I've done met requirements management, it's always been a sort of specialist little team, systems engineers who sort of sit in the corner and <laughs> sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> sort of build You've just disenfranchised a good portion of our potential audience. Yeah. Yes, but but they spend a lot of time building a requirements database, you know, and, and tracking it through. Yeah. yeah. So it's quite a um, specialist topic. Yeah. So we came up, we identified this process for requirements, capture the requirements, analyze the requirements, document the requirements, and then test the requirements. Um, so we should we work through that? Why not? So capture requirements. So we've got some different ways that you can go and capture requirements, talk to the users, brainstorming. Yeah, ask them what they want, basically. Ask them what they want. And document it in some sensible way. Yes. Mm. I mean, the same old, same old, same old comes up, really. Brainstorming and questionnaires. Contract analysis. Contract requirements, prototyping. That's quite good, actually, because you sort of give them a clue. That's what Agile is a lot about, isn't it? You know, you sort of give them a bit now and see what doing whether you like waves, it or not. Doing waves. Yeah, see whether you like it or not. And if not, you know, throw it away and start again. Yeah, they call requirements features, user mm, stories. That's right, yeah. Uh-huh. Stor- user stories. Yeah, well, that's, it's, uh, I can see how that works with software. Yes. A lot more, a lot more than a... Also, use a story for a pressure vessel in a reactor. You know? <laughs> yes, well, can, let's not talk about. We could get distracted by it. We'll do an agile podcast. All oh, right, agile maybe. versus oh, waterfall oh, podcast. Oh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It'll be a different. Yes, but anyway, I mean, re- requirements capture is is all about going and talking to the customers, isn't it? Yes, what they want. yes. I always find it's quite organic. Really, it's difficult to say. Right, we've captured the requirements mm. now. Tick done. Mm. Yes. Because they evolve. Because they evolve. Which is why requirements is, is part of scope management, really. Because yes. you, you sort of do that first pass, don't you? What do you think you want? Yes. And they tell you what they think they want. And then and you, you write it all it. down and you show them it. They go, I don't want that. I don't want that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yes. Oh, I want a ball. Here's a ball. No, not that ball. <laughs> yeah, I once trained a lady who um, worked on Bond Street. She'd built a jewellers. They were bespoke jewellers on Bond Street. And most of their customers were in overseas market and um, she'd built all sorts of 3D models and visualisations of what this new shop was going to be like Yes, I got the builder in, built it basically remodelled one of the yes. one of the prestigious shops in Bond Street and um, the, the owner walked in and said don't like it, <laughs> take it all out start again <laughs> start again, <laughs> it wasn't good enough it wasn't high enough spec mm, I, I could see that I mean, but, but I said to her what she said, no, the architect came in and he showed him all the 3Ds and the samples. But when he saw it all, he just couldn't, um, that's the problem. Visualise it. Couldn't yeah. visualise it till he actually saw it. Well, I think that's a quite a common problem. I mean, yes. you know, you show people 
sketch, sketches and schematics and drawings and colors and technical and the specifications. Yeah, yeah. And colors always look much more vivid on a drawing than they do yes. in, the, in the finished product. I know when we were doing the school, we had red brick and cedar cladding. Yes. And the cedar cladding on the drawings looked orange, and everybody threw their hands up in horror and said, oh, I don't like that. And then, of course, when it actually got put up, it wasn't orange at all. Well, it was just, for about a week, and then it went to that sort of silvery colour. Yes, okay. You know? okay. So I think, you know, a lot of it, you know, a lot of the time people point the finger at the, the poor old users and say, well, you didn't tell us what you wanted. Mm. And it's kind of, well, perhaps you didn't ask the right questions. Yes. Perhaps you didn't really ask them fully enough what they really wanted. Yes. And sometimes, we, you know, there's a danger you try and be too prescriptive too early. So yes. I give them the solution without asking enough about yes. what the problem is. And I think a lot of that requirements capture it, all of these sort of processes. This is supposed to go in the project management plan, I guess. You know, all of these sorts of... baseline. It's one of those baselines. Isn't well, it? yeah, but it's the, the process for gathering requirements. Yes. You'd probably, you know, arguably, you'd have to write this down, get this agreed, then do it. Yes. But I don't think it, it all it's happens as systematic like, like that. Yeah, you know, like I'm with you, down really. The requirements... Yeah. Specification. I mean, it's easier if you're doing lots of projects the same because you can get a. Well, it comes down to a tick list in the end, doesn't it? Yeah, you can yeah. get a sort of standard specification. Yeah. Well, you, you see that there. buying a car, don't you? You know, so what colours do you want? Do you want, do you want a sunroof? What engine size? And, you know, yes. there's only a. Okay, there's lots of options, but there's a limited number yes. of them. Yes, you're building a house. You know, you've got. Um, but I've, I've got this dream of building my own house one day. And, but basically, you've got a sort of standard set of requirements for. Yes, for a house, you know. Especially. I don't know. I know requirements are different from the house, aren't they? No, but you your requirements are I want to house three kids, it's a actually, wife and it, that, two cats. That, that and comes down to a analysis. Of guinea pigs actually. and horses. That comes something. down to analysis actually, because because what you start off, you're saying, well, what do we want? And then the analysis is saying, well, what can we actually realistically do? And there's a trade off between the two, you know. Yeah. So you're looking at. Well, I think that's where you separate sort of what, what do I want, but what do I want to achieve. Yes. Because requirements, the, the danger with requirements is you're too specific. So you start from a point where uh-huh. you've already made assumptions about what the answer is. Yes. So I want to house a wife, three children. Yes. Oh, well, you need a house then. Well, yes. No, a flat do, or a bungalow, or, or caravan, or caravan, yes, or, that's right. or a camper van, or yes, that's right. you know, space station. You know, yes. but if you if you sort of leap to the conclusion, well, I want like you said, I want to design my house. Is it really a house you want to design okay. or is it somewhere to live? Yes, okay. You know, so I think there's a difference between what, and that, in a way, that's the difference between an outcome and a requirement, outcome and output, really. Yes. Because you start to be too, they always talk about being descriptive. Yes, but I think actually we jumped to the solution too early. And I did that that's my right. thinking about a house. Mm, what I really want right. is something that's going to be easy to live in and um, but, cheap to but, but the way you said it, you see, is I really, really want to buy, build my own house. Yes, okay. It didn't and seem to have anything to do with living in it afterwards. Yes, maybe. <laughs> yes, it's true. You know, I think so I think we run the risk of doing that with, you yes. know, sort of, well, here's one I prepared earlier. What do you think of this? And then the users pick holes in it. And then they're not really so ever satisfied. coming back to requirements. So I know we weren't going to try and do this, but actually we need to express our requirements in the outcome that we want to achieve. As well, yes. Rather than the, the solution that we want. It's all part of the story, isn't it? Yes. You know. And we always talk about the fact that if you don't know what you want to use it for, when you go buy a car, right, a car salesman, the first thing we will do is say, oh, well, hello, where do you live? How many children have you got? What, how many miles do you do? What do you, you know, what do you do for a living? I ask you loads and loads of sort of open-ended questions to try and get an idea of what, what, sort, of, what sort of car's going to suit what you want. Rather you know? than you saying, oh, I want that one, and then getting halfway through, oh, I can't oh, get my luggage in it. Yeah, that's right. Take me golf oh, I didn't, didn't realise I had four golf? miles to the gallon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see what I mean? And I think that's, you know, there's that old story where you've got one finger pointing at the users, but there's three fingers pointing back at you. It's probably because you didn't ask the questions properly. So can we do a real example? So maybe web development. So a requirement for a new website is to reduce the amount of bounce rates. And so we want to, yeah, generally want to improve stickiness. You stickiness. Wanna, you want people you want, to you want be to engaged. Maximize you want maximize your conversion. The, the software they always used to talk about, it's got to be user friendly. Yes. It's got to have a fast response well, time. It's really hard to describe. Exactly, yeah. And it comes down to quality. That's why quality and requirements are so tightly interwoven because yes. unless you kind of know what you want, you never know when you got it. Yes. But if you describe it er- erroneously at the beginning, then someone you, delivers you, it according you, to the specification. But you can set the requirement because you can say we want um, 50% of the users who visit a web page yes. to 
to stay on it to convert more than, or something yeah. to, to click on Spend something money. or stay more than a minute yeah but you see if i was developing a web page for you i wouldn't guarantee to deliver that no, but it's still my requirement. Exactly, yes. But you, you, you've then got to satisfy yourself that what we've designed is going to be suitable. Okay. So that's quite interesting. That splits off a user requirement. So that's the user requirement. That's the top end of it, yeah. Top end of it. So a system requirement, when you that's then right. get down to colours and buttons. That's and, right. And, and that's, that's more right. specific. That's the, yeah. the... But at some point, you have to let go because you, you kind of say, well, this is what I want to achieve. And then you get some, you know, that's why you get a web designer to design it and then a web coder to code it. Yes. Because... They Otherwise, you're, con- you're continually constrained by the art of what they think is possible. Yes. So you never challenge anybody or anything. You know, so you, that's why you have the different skills doing different things. Mm-hmm. So you don't get bogged down in the art of the possible, if you like. Mm. Or, or so, un, un, it, you know. So let's move on to the analysis then. Yep. So we've done the capture. So analysis is about usually through different options, isn't it? If we're looking at different design options to say which of these is going to meet our requirements in. Um, it's by prioritising the requirements, deciding which are important, and then looking at different options to say which of these op- or which of these possible design solutions is going to meet my requirements the best. That's right, and they've got a, they they sort of do a little mini case business case for every requirement. Yes, because that's going to cost that much. That's going to cost that much. So, yes, and I've only got this much, so I can't have that. You yes. know, so you start to work out what you can do, what you can't do. That's right. That's right. Or what you can afford, what you can't afford. Yes. And that's, I think, that, is that sort of value management, isn't it? That's what, that's, yeah, that's I was going to say, there's loads in. of value management tools you can wheel out here if you want. You can go on a course on value management, folks. You do a whole, <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so there's a whole uh, a weighted criteria and, mm. and you can get as complicated as you want, really. Yeah. But from there, you choose the technical solution that's going to meet your requirements in the best way. System solution, yeah. System Cause solution. Because it, 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 to say it's technical implies it's a, bit of software or something but a, a system solution is um i want to process a million passengers a day yes no that's too many half a million fifty thousand passengers a day yes through an airport terminal building yes you can't design the building unless you understand the system the flow that's right that's right so where will the people park where will they get out of the car where will they load the luggage where are you going to put the trolleys where are the checking desk going to be and da, 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 da. so the, how that all uh, how that all works is part and parcel of the technology. That's so, right. But but the actual technical bits so come after that. Yes, that's right. That's so right. you have it's like a system requirement, and in IT software terms, it's you know when you press tab, what screen does it go to? Mm-hmm. So I will filled this screen in. What happens next? Uh-huh. What sort of reports do I need? How am I going to manage uh-huh. the users? All that sort of stuff. And then that's not requirements. That's just that's that's the stuff that you need to do to support the delivery of the requirements. Yes. yes. And then then you get the technical solutions, which is down to the nitty sort of nuts and bolts of how all those individual yes. components work. So in this bit, you quite often see some modeling. So they build a model. That's right. A, a physical model. Yeah. <laughs> or a um, technical or a mathematical model, or a computer model of the that's of right. the system you're building. Mm, mm. And then once you've done all that, you have to work out how you're going to test it all. And that's where you come to documentation. So then we've got a, a set of requirements, and we know how the system is going to deliver those requirements. So mm-hmm. we can then think about how we're going to test those and demonstrate that's those. Right. So in your airport, you can test each bit, each that's component, right. the check-in desk. So one, you might set a requirement for the check-in desk that it takes, I don't know, 10 well, it seems like ages, but two minutes to complete a check-in process from beginning yes, to end. Right. And then you can test that. But yes, that doesn't tell right. you that you've got 50,000 people through the terminal every no, no. day because right. you've got security. So you can test each bit. That's right. And then you can test the whole system together, mm-hmm. um, often by getting friends and family around for the day mm-hmm. to um, mm-hmm. volunteers. <laughs> load, load testing, yeah. Yes. Individual people, and individual tests can be done. That's called unit testing. Uh-huh. So, and that's where you get down to unit specifications. So you mm-hmm. get down to the spec and the, the actual product description of the thing you're going to deliver. Yes. And then you, but you, you, it's no good delivering, no good defining that unless you know how you're going to test it. That's right. So that gets back to our product breakdown structure. That's actually. right. So with your product breakdown structure, each product should have a requirement specification. And it also says how it's going to be tested. Quality expectations and, and, right. and how you're going to test it. That's, that's right. right. So in your world, that's software modules. In my world, that's sort of factory acceptance test usually. Okay. So a bit of kit is manufactured and then it's tested before it leaves the factory and that shows that it meets its technical right. specification. That's and right. then you put it in the system and you test it. And it doesn't work. It doesn't work because yeah. of the integration. Yeah, that's of right. the other 
Yeah, so the data coming out of one bit doesn't it? It's not <laughs> the same the as they expecting because yeah, yeah, right. no one told them what. Well, the other bits of kit that other manufacturers have supplied. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, it won't be our fault, of course. That's so unit testing and system testing. Mm. Mm. So right. you've got these different levels. You've got the user wants fifty thousand people a day. Mm-hmm. You can test each. Um, mm-hmm. You can design a system to do that, which you can test with a model. Actually, you can you can test it with the model, so mm-hmm. you can simulate how it's going to work quite often because mm-hmm. you can't get fifty thousand people mm-hmm. for the day till the day you open. Mm. And then you can test each component on a or unit as a. Well, they do all sorts of. I mean, in, in airports, they do all sorts of modelling on crowd behaviour and all that sure. sort of thing, don't they? Yes. How people move around buildings and where yes. the focal points are. Yes. Flood modelling as well is the other one that I've come across. Um, where you've got the people who work for the environment agency and they model the likelihood of flooding. You know, mm-hmm. but you can't. You know, because you. You might you're trying to avoid a hundred year event, so yeah, yeah. you can't wait a hundred years to test it. You have to. <laughs> yeah, but that's semi chaotic, isn't it? I mean, that's, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Well, I don't think it's semi chaotic, but it's chaotic. Yeah. So then so you get requirements testing, and um, that's it. Job done, really. You've got to have a test for everything you do. Um, and that's where you need a database, really, because you've got requirements at a functional level. You've got requirements at a right. system level and requirements at a unit level. And I'm not sure. Joining them all yeah, up. I'm not sure how systematic it all is, to be honest with you. But well, it depends how formal your systems engineering is. Yeah. It depends how, if yeah. it's a safety critical system or something like that. You yeah, need okay. To show traceability of the requirements from the top level down to the. You have to prove yes. <laughs> that my reactor's not going to blow up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably yeah. worth doing. Yeah. But I suspect most projects don't get involved. No. In. So that comes to our V model. Yeah. So all that, all the V model is says you start off with these functional requirements at the top level, which are what the users wants, and then you you have a set of system requirements, a set of product requirements, and um, you sort of come down the V on the the left hand side, and then you go back up the V, testing each of those as you go. Yeah, that's right. The only bit we're missing is the iterative bit, really. So as part of the design yeah. process, you might go back and say, well, you can't actually have 50,000, but we can do 45,000. Mm. Mm. So do you want to flex your requirement? Really? Mm. Okay. And then the next bit of this is all about configuration management, which is... Should we stop and do another podcast on that? Because we've done 17 minutes. Um, it's in the same assessment. Thing. I know, I know. All we right. could do part two. All right. All right. Commercial break. Commercial break. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To order a study guide, e-learning or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojectstraining.com.